requests. Uh, we, if you could please put yourselves on mute uh, during the presentation. We have approximately a 30 minute presentation about the island and about the magical uh, Royal Hideaway Resort. And we will be then taking the question and answer period at the tail end of it, which you can uh, type in questions in the bottom of your chat window. Uh, again, my name is Cyril Lemaire. I am the managing director with Quest Travel Adventures, and we are the official office of representation for the island of Tenerife in North America. And many of you probably have never heard of Tenerife and don't know why it's a great destination to send your travelers to. And my elevator pitch to all of you is this, is if you can imagine uh, the volcanic landscapes, lusciousness and resorts of Maui, combine that with the Spanish colonial architecture food, wine, gastronomy, and port-like feel of Barcelona, combined with the beautiful nature reserves, black and white sand beaches, and marine wildlife of Costa Rica. You put all those three together into one little island, and that's what you have on Tenerife. Now, they call Tenerife the island of eternal spring because it is perfect temperature there year-round. It is between 70 degrees to 78 degrees from January through December. There is no rainy season. There is no hurricane season. There is no typhoon season. It's just located in a perfect location off the uh, coast of Africa, uh, just southwest of Spain. And it is an absolute magical destination. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about what there is to do there. Uh, the highlights and then how you can get to the island. And then we're going to uh, have a featured presentation by the brand new uh, Royal Hideaway Corrales Resort. Now what you're looking at here is the overview of the north end of the island. And the island is uh, about two hours, it takes two hours from the north to the south. It is a very well touristed Island. It gets about 6 million travelers a year, mainly from the UK, uh, from France, from the Spanish mainland, as well as other parts of Europe. So it has a very sophisticated infrastructure. And what you're looking at here is Mount Taide and the Orotava Valley. Now, it's easy to get there. Uh, there are more than 150 points of connectivity into the island with regard to flights. Uh, the flights, the easiest way to get to is through Madrid and or uh, London Heathrow Airport. It's about a three-hour flight from Madrid uh, and about a four-hour flight from uh, London. We are working on trying to secure direct flights uh, from the eastern seaboard, effective the fall of this year in the uh, October to November season. Uh, we're still waiting for the final announcements about that, but uh, we're cautiously optimistic that we'll have direct flights, which will make it uh, an even better destination, more convenient destination for all of you to send your clients. Now, a little bit about the, the Canary Islands. They are part of Spain. Uh, there are seven Canary Islands, and the island of Tenerife is the biggest one, and we recommend that island over the other islands because it brings a blend of the best of all the other islands together in one location. It has a very sophisticated infrastructure. As I mentioned, it has uh, 6 million tourists a year, a million inhabitants, and the capital city of Santa Cruz. It has a, uh, a really sophisticated medical infrastructure, uh, train infrastructure, and highway infrastructure as well. The, the roadways are very well lit, very clear, and there's a, a highway that goes all the way around, almost all the way around the island, about three quarters of the way around the island. Uh, and it can take you about an hour, depending on traffic, from the north end of the island to the southern end of the island. And we certainly recommend to encourage you and your guests to check out the two parts of the island because they are very, very different, as we'll go through. Now, 
what is there to do on the island and why would you send your clients be the, yeah be they individual couples looking for a romantic getaway or maybe some girls trying to get away for uh, for for a little vacation or maybe you have an incentive group uh, and a meeting uh, organization or corporation that's looking to to do a corporate meeting well all of the reasons that we'll go through today uh, you know again are are why you should send your clients to Tenerife. There are, of course, beautiful white sand beaches like you can see here in the south. Uh, but one of the highlights and the reason, and most people go to Tenerife, and the number one attraction on the island is the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Mount Taide National Park. Now, this is considered the crown jewel of the island because Mount Taide is not only the tallest volcano in uh, Europe, it is the tallest uh, also mountain in Spain. It's one of the largest national parks and most visited na national parks in Spain. And the reason it's spectacular is because it is 12,800 feet high. So if you can imagine going from sea level all the way to the top, and, and that's what you're looking at here. What you're looking at is uh, from the very summit of the uh, of the volcano and of the mountain that you can access via cable car. You can drive all the way through into the park up to about 9,000 feet from there, take the cable car all the way to the summit. And this is a phenomenon that you're looking at here called the Sea of Clouds. And the Sea of Clouds is simply the shadow at sunset of the island, which as you can see is a perfect cone-shaped uh, shadow. Uh, over the clouds and over the other islands in the Canaries. And it's it's absolutely a fantastic experience and one where you can actually, actually see the, uh, the green flash, which is the moment at sunset where the sun disappears. And, and for a brief second, you can see a little green splash. Um, and because it's a 12,800-foot-high volcano, um, you go through various microclimates as you ascend into the national park. And one of the things you have are more than 800 unique species of fauna and flora on the island, including some of these flowers that are six feet high and they grow uh, in the caldera, which is within the national park. And they come in beautiful colors, as you can see the red, they also come in white. Uh, and there are also some, some other colors as well. Um, and it's very, it's a very rocky landscape, but it's, it's also one that has a lot of richness and lushness as you go down in elevation. Now, one of the other highlights of Mount Taide is that it's uh, considered the second best spot in the world for stargazing. And that's why there is the NASA Space Observatory on the island and, and in the National Park of Mount Taide, and as well European Space Agency Observatory, solar observatories. And this is something that, uh, that you can visit uh, with a guide. And it's, uh, it's a, a very educational session where you can actually look through the telescopes and see uh, flashes of, uh, of the sun. And you can see galaxies and stars that are tens and hundreds of thousands of light years away with the naked eye. And what you're looking at here is not photoshopped. This is actually what the skies look like uh, in Tenerife at night. And that's because there is no light pollution um, because you're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There is no uh, car pollution and you're also in altitude. So you can you can really see some phenomenal uh, galaxy and, uh, and stars. Now, for those of you who are interested in uh, more family-oriented destinations, well, again, Tenerife is perfect. It has the number one water park in the world, as rated by TripAdvisor. It is called CM Park, and it has uh, it's built in a in an authentic high-like architecture. It also has the number one zoo in the park, uh, called uh, Loro Park, which is located on the nor north part of the island. And the owner of both properties also has a third property on the island, which is called Hotel Botanica, which is considered and just got last year rated as the number one spa in Europe. So uh, lots, lots to do. There are also more than 24 species of uh, pilot whales and dolphins. So they are right off of the coast. You don't need to take an hour boat ride. You can take a 10 minute boat ride or even take in a kayak 
off of uh, the beach, you might get lucky and, and, and see them because they like to interact with the people. Uh, and if you're into adventure sports, well, the island has been considered an, an adventure sports mecca for a number of years. There's pretty much every activity you could think of. There's diving, there's parasailing, there's kite surfing. In fact, they had the kite surfing championship last year uh, on the south side of the island. And, and this is, again, the Orotova Valley. And, and there's also plenty of cycling, cycling and hiking. Uh, because it is very dry and a perfect year-round temperature, it's one of the top places for the European athletes that prep for the Tour de France. Uh, and they go there and they cycle, and there's, there's much diverse landscapes, as you can see. These are some of the hills on the north end of the island, but there's also uh, some flatter terrain on the southern part of the island. Now, one of my favorite areas is on the southwest corner of the island, and it is a series of volcanic cliffs, as you can see here, called Los Gigantes, or also known as the Giants. And these are giant volcanic cliffs that are 3,000 feet high, 1,000 meters high in, 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 in rock face, and uh, they can be explored by boat, if you wish. Um, there are little boats that come out of the, the port that can take you for an hour, an hour and a half ride. But um, if you feel more adventurous or have uh, a group and want to do some activities, I would encourage you to uh, do it by kayak uh, or by paddleboard, as you can see here. And one of the other options is you can start from the top of, of the air, uh, the, the Los Gigantes Cliffs, and walk down to the beach uh, and get picked up by a, uh, a water taxi that comes through every few hours. Now. For nature lovers, the island is also, uh, you know, one of the top places for photography, for bird watching, and for viewing some of these national uh, national parks, including this rhododendron and uh, fern forest up in the northern part of the island called Taganana National Park. Now, again, this is not photoshopped. You can see the lady here taking a picture towards the ocean. Uh, and you have these these huge, almost Jurassic-like uh, rhododendron, giant rhododendron and fern forest that you can see here. That's that's quite the spectacular backdrop to uh, to an ocean view. If you like to golf, there are eight courses on the island. And what's interesting about the island is that uh, it it used to be an old banana plantation, and there are still many many banana plantations on the island. It's one of the top. Uh, economic um, parts of, of the economy uh, behind tourism. And what's interesting is that you can see throughout the golf courses these black volcanic terraces that have been built throughout the centuries. And it's a very old island because it used to be the last port of call between the American settlers and um, the, the European settlers in the New World. This is uh, one of the courses on the southern end of the island. There's, uh, there's a course on the north end of the island that's considered the Pebble Beach of Spain, which is called Buena Vista Golf Course. Uh, and there are many, many different types of golf courses to choose from uh, throughout the south, most of which overlook the water. Now, the number two UNESCO World Heritage Site on the island is the old capital, the old Spanish capital of La Laguna. Now, as I mentioned, the island was the last port of call for all the Spanish settlers going back and forth. Uh, so there is a lot of old Spanish colonial architecture. Uh, and this is the clock tower in La Laguna. It is a university town and it is a historic town. Um, and it is the footprint on which the city of Santiago and Chile and Habana and Cuba was based off of. Um, now, another reason to visit Tenerife is that every February, they have the second largest carnival in the world behind Rio de Janeiro. And this is the Carnival Queen from a couple years ago where they invite designers from all throughout the Canaries to create these very ornate dresses and headpieces in one lucky lady at the end of the carnival, the seven days of carnival. Uh, gets named the Carnival Queen. Now, there are also other festivals throughout the year. There is the La Romerias, which are uh, every Saturday throughout the June through September time frame. Locals get dressed in, um, in their local uh, 
costumes and they have uh, song and dance and they also do sand art using the art from all of the different um, using the sand from from the volcano to create different colors and different types of murals throughout the villages. This is the amphitheater within Santa Cruz, uh, the capital. There are concerts and activities year round. And if you're like me and you and your clients are food and wine lovers, well, it's again, a great place to, to, to experience unique tastes and flavors. If you can think a little bit of uh, Spanish Southern tapas combined with the influences and tastes of South America and Peruvian type um, flavors. So the manchego cheese, the jamón uh, is clearly a, a, a basic tapas that everyone should taste on the island, but there are also unique honeys uh, because of all the unique uh, fauna and flora on the island. Uh, the, the honeys are quite spectacular as well as uh, the potatoes. Believe it or not, they have more than 200 different types of little potatoes that they cook in a very unique Canarian way uh, and eat with mojo sauce, which is a combination of garlic and uh, almost like a garlic aioli made with uh, green peppers. And uh, actually one's made with santro and one's made with red, pe red peppers. Now, uh, there are also plenty of restaurants throughout the seaside with fresh fish. Uh, and also many Canarian, authentic Canarian dishes, uh, such as this one, which is a braised pork. Um, and again, I, I see some folks typing in some questions. Please keep them coming, and we'll address them at the end of the of the session. Now, another known little known fact is that the island is also home to many uh, world winning, award winning wineries. Uh, and they have the Listan Bianco and the Listan Negro, which are unique grape varieties that fortunately did not get wiped out in, uh, in the phylloxera epidemics of the 1800s. And as a result, uh, you have these really unique uh, wines on the island. And the white is a little bit like a Sauvignon Blanc, uh, maybe mixed in with a Chenin Blanc, uh, crisp, dry, um, you know, with a, with a lot of fruit. Uh, and the red is uh, much more tanniny, a little bit like a Shiraz um, Tempranillo mix. And uh, this is again the, the lovely Los Gigantes in, in the Costa Hedeje area and uh, in the Oratava Valley. And now I'm going to turn it over uh, to my colleague Paul from the Royal Hideaway, who's going to uh, talk about uh, all of the different amenities of the resort and uh, why it's a great place to send your clients. Paul, take it away. Hi, Tiril. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to present the resort to all of you. As you see here, it's, um, well, it says opening soon. It's open already, yeah, from February now, already three months. So it's, it has been an amazing uh, opportunity for us to show a little bit more of Barcelo Group. Yeah, Barcelo is made with four different brands. We have Royal Hideaway, like uh, the, the top luxury hotels. Later we have uh, Occidental Hotels that are the ones for the city. And we have Allegro that are the ones more for vacation. Yeah. Um, Regarding the place, uh, well, I think that city has explained very good about Tenerife. Yeah, I think that's better than me. <laughs> I mean, I'm really, really glad to be here now. Yeah, I'm going to do a lot of things after this webinar. Yeah, <laughs> because now I know a lot of things from that. But this is located in the south of Tenerife. Uh, it's a small village that is called La Caleta. Uh, here, years ago, it was nothing around. Now it was just like a fisher town. Uh, and now in the in the present, yeah, you can find a lot of restaurants yeah, with local food, and a lot of, of local people are coming here. Yeah, not just the tourism, as well some local people from Tenerife is like a place that we like to to be. Yeah, just because of the food and the fresh fish. Yeah. It's very, very near to, as you can see here now in the map, it's very near to Costa Deje and Los Cristianos. Yeah, you can go walking actually. Yeah, it's just uh, 15 minutes from the from the center from Los Cristianos. Yeah, so this part is a little bit less noisy and it's, it's quite quiet. Yeah, 
well about the temperature yeah Sibir has spoke a lot of the of the of the tropical weather from here yeah we are in an average temperature of 24 degrees yeah maximum just 30 and it's sunny almost every day yeah it's very it's very nice to be here in the south of tenerife because uh, the, sun, the sun is shining every day of the year yeah you go to the north you can find more more rain yeah but in the south is good weather every every season well here we go inside the the first location of the hotel this one is my favorite because it's like a cave the hotel is the hotel reception uh, the resort is made with two buildings. One building is for the family side, the other building is the adults only side. As you can see here, we have Corales Beach and Corales Suites. Yeah? The adults only is over 16 years old and the Corales Suites is for, for families. Yeah? In the adults only side, we only have junior suites and in the family side, we have one, two and three bedrooms. In the side from the adults only, you can find the spa and the wellness center. We have two restaurants and one buffet and one rooftop very, very nice. That is the picture that we can see now, rooftop uh, pool and one pool in the bottom side as well. Here, uh, normally, well, now we are just seeing the junior suites. All the rooms are like this one. We have uh, 55 square meters to 65 square meters rooms. The terrace is amazing. You have two like large terraces with two nice sun beds. The rest of the room, as you can see, is fully equipped. We have uh, coffee uh, coffee facilities, um, heat, uh, no, heat, no, sorry, uh, sorry, but coffee facility, facilities, yeah, and uh, then for boiling the water, yeah, for making tea, yeah, okay. facilities as well. We yeah, uh, we have uh, all the amenities are from Bulgari. All the, the linen in the bed is three hundred uh, linen from Egyptian Egyptian uh, lines, yeah. Yeah. And and actually we have one hundred twenty one rooms. Twenty one of them is with a jacuzzi outside on the terrace. Yeah. Here is the terrace of one of the normal rooms. In the other 20, we have 21 with the jacuzzi in the right side. Um, we just make the difference between the, all of them are facing the sea, all of them are facing the ocean views, as you can see in this picture. But we make the difference between normal ocean view, panoramic ocean view, and with the hot tub outside. Yeah? But all of them, they have amazing views, as you can see here. OK, here it is. Yeah? <laughs> this one is the one with the, with the jacuzzi. Yeah, and, and yeah. Okay, now we go through the gastronomy here. Uh, we push a lot to, to make the gastronomy something special in the resort. Yeah, so that's why we, we spoke with Juan Carlos Padron. He is a winner of a Michelin star here in Canary in Tenerife. Yeah, and he's just giving us advice in one of the restaurants. It's called Maresia, and you can find a tasty menu very with a good price. Yeah? And all the products are coming from, from and all the chef instructions are coming from the Michelin star chef. We have the now Atlantic food experience that is the, like the main restaurant that is based in um, Atlantic buffet style yeah? for breakfast and dinner. And we have Sanho that is the is Corales in Japanese. That is an a la carte restaurant specialized in Nikkei cuisine. It's the fusion between Peruvian cuisine and Japanese, and it's very, very nice. I mean, it's my favorite as well. <laughs> Here we have them, three different restaurants. In the a la carte restaurants, for the people that are coming with, uh, with the uh, health board, they can uh, get a 30% discount because these restaurants are not included in the normal rate but they can get a 30% discount in this hotel and in the Corales Suites as well. Everyone uh, that is staying in the Corales Suites, they can access to the Corales uh, Suites without problem and they can use all the facilities. Yeah? And if they are staying in the Corales Suites, they can come to the Corales Beach, the adults only side, if they are over 16. Okay, here we have Maresia, is the Michelin star uh, restaurant, as I told you before. We have the rooftop pool, we have the, the bar, we have the, and the restaurant. Yeah? The restaurant is only for dinner, 
and during the day we serve uh, cocktails and a gourmet snack in the pool as well. Yeah? Everything is advised by, by this Michelin star chef and it's, uh, everyone is very happy with experience and normally it takes around three hours to go through the, the menu but you try all the things from here from the island and um, it's a very nice fusion between the the, the the modern cuisine and the traditional cuisine from the Canary Islands. Okay, now that was the Corales Beach, the adults only side. Now we are going to the Corales Suites, that is the family family side from the hotel. Here in the picture, we can see the main pool of the resort. We have very nice Balinese beds just floating on the on the pool, and you can see the views are amazing. At the end of the picture, you can see Costa Deje that is just in the, in the left corner of the picture, yeah, right there. Um, uh, all the views during the night is amazing. You can see all the coast with all the lights, um, and it's quite, quite nice. <clears throat> Here we have uh, 114 rooms. Uh, we make difference between one, two, and three apartments. We have villas as well, and the penthouse. Uh, in total, we have 63 rooms with private pool in the resort. All of them are in this side, in the family side. And we make the difference between the, 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 the rooms that are just in the bottom side and in the top floor that are the penthouse because they are quite bigger. Um, all of them are equipped with a, fully, with a kitchen, with laundry service and uh, with a dining room and a huge terrace. Okay, as you can see here, um, this is one of the, the look suites. Uh, we have uh, all of them with the, the, the same style. Uh, this is the, the standard room, and the difference with the penthouse is just the, the size of the, of the dining room and the number of, of bedrooms as well. As I told you before, uh, all is domotic, is like um, it's automatic from the reception. We can uh, manage the lights, we can manage the temperature of the room, we can manage the sounds. So when a guest is checking into the hotel, we can have everything ready. If he just requests to have some music in the in the room, if they request to put the heater before we <laughs> they arrive, or if they request something special, we can we can manage everything through the reception. Paul, one of the questions that just came through is um, actually from a couple of people is do the, the adult only rooms uh, have two double beds or just one king bed? Okay, they are two double beds. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the one that you see in the picture, I don't know if we can go uh, to the picture, I can explain to you easier. Is, uh, is we, well, no worries. Uh, no. I don't think <laughs> okay, so so basically all the rooms are for is two beds together. Yeah, we can make it also with one king bed. We have both options. Yeah, but the beds should be together. Yeah, we cannot separate the beds. Okay, understood. You understand more or less? Yeah, all the rooms are with king beds and and two beds together, but we cannot make two beds separate. Understood. Together. Understood. Yeah? Thanks for the clarification. Okay, so here we can see the the look suite with two bedrooms. This one uh, is just the category as the same as the one before, yeah, but with two bedrooms. All of them are facing the panoramic uh, ocean views. I mean, facing the view. This picture is regarding to one bedroom villa. We have uh, as well one and two bedroom villas uh, with one floor or duplex. Yeah. All of them are, are, are the same equipped as the other ones with the kitchen, the laundry, and, and so on. Okay. All the um, all the all the pools in the resort, the ones in the main areas, I mean the ones in the in the rooms are heated around 26 degrees during all the year, all the year round. All the here we can find the, the gastronomy as it was in the other hotel as well, in the Corales Beach. In the Corales Suites, we push for the gastronomy. And here we have the Olivia Mediterranean Market, that is the buffet-style restaurant for breakfast and dinner. We have the Starfish, that is specialized in fish and rices during the day, I mean, meat grilled during the night. 
we have Alice that is based in the Alice in Wonderland uh, story, no? and as you can see in the pictures, more well, here we cannot see it very good, but everything is is regarding the story of Alice in Wonderland, and it's very nice for the for the kids. And we serve coffee and tea and cakes. And finally, we have La Gelateria, that is a traditional Italian ice cream shop here in the in the main reception of the Colale Street. Are there hard board and full board options? Yes, we have. I don't know, Cyril, shall I answer now? Or sure. Want to answer yeah, no, go right ahead. Go, go right ahead. <laughs> okay, here uh, in, in the Corales suites, the ones for the family side, you have the, the option for only accommodation, uh, accommodation and breakfast, and half board, full board, we don't have at the moment. And in the other side, in the Corales Beach, we have a bed and breakfast and a half board as well. We don't have all inclusive or full board at the moment. Okay, here in the picture, we are saying the, the Starfish is the restaurant that is located in the main pool from the Corales Suites. Uh, this restaurant is for peace and rice during the day, and during the night is the brasserie, the grill more of a uh, specific for meats. Okay, here we go with the wellness and spa. This one is located in the Corales Beach, in the adults only site. It's, uh, it's specialized in Ayurveda uh, medicine or Ayurveda, um, yeah, Ayurveda. Uh, we have wellness personal assistant. That is when you once you enter to the spa, it's uh, showing you which kind which kind of massage shall you get to 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 be to relax or if you want to have some if you have any pain. She is your assistant for everything regarding with the uh, with the beauty and the and the relax. We have uh, like a equipped as well in the in the in the in the spa and uh, the fitness room is twenty four hours for everyone. So all the people that is located in the Corales streets, they can access to the spa and the gym if they are over 16 without problem. Regarding the other activities, we have a kids club in the, in the Corales streets as well. We have some evening entertainment. Normally we have live music every, every day in both, in both hotels. Yeah, and we make uh, some gastronomy workshops with the with the guests. We have like a wine tasting, we have a cheese tasting, we have a potatoes tasting. The ones that you talked before that we have 250 variety here in the island. Yeah, so we give the opportunity to the guests to to try them and to and to explain them how to make mojo. And so we are pushing a lot with the gastronomy of the of the island so that's why we want to to bring this to all our customers uh, regarding the pools and garden we have 10,000 square meters uh, the the beach is quite near is land ramada that is located just on the, the bottom of the hotel and we have the option to bring all the the guests with the boogies to to the to the to the main beach uh, and the, Regarding the meetings and events, we have a, it's, a, it's not too big. We have a small conference room because we are pushing to make all the all the events outside as we are in Tenerife. So normally, uh, we have this as backup, not for not for uh, more things. Yeah. Then we have free Wi-Fi in the hotel. We have a shopping avenue inside of the hotel with uh, three different fashion shops. We have a press multi-press shop as well, and a hairdresser and beauty salon. 24 hours medical service, ATM, well, the normal things. Here we can see regarding the conference space, <clears throat> which is the distribution. As you see, the, the, <clears throat> the, the room is not very big, but we can get up to 80 people in classroom, and the, we can separate the room in two different rooms, so as for small meetings, 20, 25 people for per room, yeah. Okay, nearby activities, I think that, uh, <laughs> that uh, Cyril had made a good uh, presentation of, all of, the, all of about all of this, yeah. And that's we are the, pushing the goal. 
And yeah. that's the view of La Gomera, is that correct? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we have Justin from La Gomera, that is like an amazing sunset every day. And shopping centers, the water park, whale and dolphin, well, day day, of course, all these kind of things. I just want to stop here a moment because I want to explain to you that this is the experience uh, hotel. This is sorry, the experience design hotel. Yeah, and um, we are pushing a lot for the for the experience inside the hotel and outside. And I don't have this information in the presentation because it's something that is live and is going on now because we just opened three months ago. But just to give you an idea, we are having, for example, a chef in room experience that you can uh, you can order to have a chef in the room with a party of four, five people, six people that can work very good for incentives and for guests as well. He's explaining to you all the menu that you're going to get that night in your room and he's cooking with you and with the kids and it's a very nice experience. I did it myself twice with some press people and other customers from the hotel and it was very nice. It's around three hours. Um, basically, just a chef is coming to your room, a cocktail man as well, and they are making everything there. You are uh, taking part of the of the cooking part, and you are learning how to make mofo, how to make the potatoes, how to cook some uh, traditional fish from here. And later, you are having some 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 wines with them. And regarding this experience, we have as well the floating massage that we are giving the opportunity to the to the guests to get a, a a therapist in the in the private room. He is coming to your room and he's giving to you a massage inside the pool. Uh, and we have as well the experience with the a lot of a small experience like this. It was just a small detail, but we have the, the idea that what is going on here, yeah because we want the people to bring this to their homes back yeah when they are going back from the holidays at least they are bringing something uh, some exciting experience well paul so that's you. from my side Steven. i don't know if it was sorry for my english because here yeah, well, at the moment we are speaking a lot of spanish yeah perfect perfect <laughs> we just have a few more slides and then we'll get into questions and answers uh thanks for that informative discussion again uh, I am Cyril Lemaire with Quest Travel Adventures, and we recommend uh, visiting the island either as an extension off of Europe, as a four-day extension, if you've got a river cruise or somebody's going to Spain or Portugal or even the UK, it's an easy way to get there. And, and during those four days, you can easily see Santa Cruz, La Laguna, and, and obviously the crown jewel, which is Mount Taide. But if you do have more time, uh, we recommend immersing yourself not only on the island of uh, Tenerife, but also visiting some of the neighboring islands, such as the one we saw of Lago Mera, which has some very unique historical uh, activities, including um, one of Christopher Columbus's original houses. Uh, we are here to help all travel agents throughout North America and tour operators. So. We are uh, a tour operator with contracts with various hotels and transportation companies on the island. We do offer 12% travel agent commissions. And uh, you can find out more information at www.traveltotenerife.com. And that is the official website for North America for the Tourism Bureau where you can find uh, this presentation, which will be, which we are recording and will be uploaded to the website later today, as well as a host of other videos and useful tools, including a Tenerife Travel Agent Academy Specialist Program. Uh, so now we're gonna open it up to questions. Uh, some of the questions that just came through include, uh, how do you get to to uh, Tenerife with flights, and what are the island airports? There's two different airports on the island. One is uh, Tenerife North, and the other, which mainly handles all domestic flights from Spain, and the other one is Tenerife South, which handles mainly international flights from the UK and other parts of the world. And the three-digit codes are TFN or TFS. Uh, another question that came through is, uh, how big is the island? Well, the island uh, takes about two hours from uh, 
two hours to all the way to go around or so, maybe three if you've got if you're trying to go through different parts of, of the area. Um, but uh, it has, a, as I mentioned, million inhabitants and uh, is is very easy to get from the north and the south very quickly. Uh, another question that came in was University Town in Tenerife. Yes, uh, that was the La Laguna, which is uh, home to the university, as well as a lot of great restaurants and uh, galleries as well. Uh, somebody sent a note saying, can travelers with food allergies dine with ease? Uh, absolutely. Um, because they, the island gets a million... Six million travelers a year from around the world. They are, you know, all the restaurants uh, are aware of, of potential food allergies. Uh, and what's nice is because they get about a million British travelers every year to the island, most of the people on the island, in addition to speaking Spanish, most of them speak English perfectly as well. So it's for, for yeah. the Americans, it's, it's a huge advantage that, um, isn't that right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I was just to mention that the people that are coming to our resort, for example, we are extending a, a pre-arrival letter to all the customers where they can choose already all the kind of allergies or if they have any problem uh, before they are coming so we can prepare everything inside here in the hotel just to make the, the, the holidays as perfect as we can there for them. And uh, in all the restaurants around here in Tenerife or in all the islands, yeah, it's like really um, uh, on top of all of this, because you know, all the British people normally they are complaining a lot of all these kind of things, yeah, and everything is ready and everything, everyone is on top of the allergies and all the issues that we can get. So, I mean, not worries about that because it's, it's quite easy to find all kinds of products in all the restaurants and all the, all the menus are saying the allergens that the, the food is, is, is bringing yeah, and in the buffets, everything is with the proper level that you can eat lactose free or gluten free and so on. So Perfect. I think that, that side, yeah, is, is quite uh, advanced here. Perfect. A few other questions before we wrap up. Uh, is it easy to island hop? So not exactly. Uh, we recommend if you're going to go to the Canary Islands, certainly do Tenerife. Uh, you can do a day trip to La Gomera, where you can take a, a, a hour ferry and, and then do a, a half day tour, three quarters of a day tour back and be back on the island by 6 p.m. Um, you could also do other islands like Lanzarote or Gran Canaria, but the islands uh, do, you know, you have to fly to the islands. That's the most convenient way to do it. And, and we recommend only a multi island trip if you're going to be there 10, 12 days or more. Um, some other questions about Carnival. When is it? Can you tell us more about it? Sure. It's called, the official name is Carnival de Santa Cruz de Tenerife. Uh, it is usually the third week of, um, of February, but it depends on the Christian uh, calendar. And, and uh, it is really, really a blast. But something to note is that because it sells out very much, uh, if you are planning on going there, it's it's very important to book hotels early uh, and as soon as possible. A couple other questions. Uh, what side of the road do they drive on? Well, it's Spain, so they drive on the right side of the road in Spain, so it's very easy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's easy to get a car. We it's it's not the type of island that we recommend for uh the American style of all inclusive. This is more of a, a type of island where we encourage people to stay at the resort and then go out and explore because it is there is so exactly. much to see. Uh, so some of you may ask about all inclusive resorts. There are some on the island, but again, the, the definition of all inclusive on the island is a little bit different than what you would find in Mexico or the. But it is certainly the island uh, is a fab fabulous alternative for your clients to uh, to the Caribbean or to uh, or to Mexico, especially for anyone looking for warm weather destinations this fall and winter. Um, one more question, one last question, which is: Is diving considered good on the island? 
Uh, and yes, the island is well known for diving as well. There's a lot of different outfitters, paddy certified outfitters on the island. And there is one area called La Catedral, which are underwater uh, volcanic um, lava tubes, which are really, really neat to explore. So again, that's uh, one of the other activities, as well as uh, shore and boat diving. Um, good question. Uh, most of the activities are boat dives. Uh, there are a combination of reef dives, wreck dives. Um, but again, it is a volcanic island, so it does drop off very quickly. With that, um, Paul, I would like to thank you for being our special host today. Um, and we look forward to sending American and uh, Canadian tourists your way. And uh, we have a beautiful resort. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everyone else for your participation. And again, uh, visit please travel to Tenerife.com for any more information. We will be holding a fam trip uh, at the end of the year in November. And if you go to travel to Tenerife.com and send us a request, uh, you will be uh, evaluated as part of the priority list um, when we finalize all our plans. And thank you very much. Okay, Cyril. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I will just put on the chat my email address, yeah, so in case you have any question about the resort, if you need something special, or if you want to, to come here by yourself, yeah, and you want a special rate, <laughs> just okay. drop me some lines. And yeah, um, I will be more than happy to answer. Perfect. And what is your email again? Can you just so for yeah. it's corales.sd yeah. at royalhideaway.com. Again, corales.sdh at royalhideaway.com. And the associate director is Pablo de la Piedra. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.